in the years that have led up to this day and age, the abortion argument has been framed as a conflict between those who are pro-life and those who are pro-choice. I do not use that language. I think language has power, and the way that you frame a discussion can sometimes set the very groundwork for who wins or loses a discussion. And I do not I do not see the ground of that conversation from the beginning by saying that those who are in favor of abortion are pro-choice. Because I do not agree with that assertion. I and those who agree with me are for life. But I think those who disagree are not for choice. And I think the last few months has decidedly bore that out. They are for abortion. Which means they are for death. They are for killing children in the womb. And I think this is decidedly borne out in the past few weeks and months when you have particular senators who advocate shutting down crisis pregnancy centers. Now, we know that abortion clinics do abortions. They do not, for the most part, and you can, of course, find certain occasions where there is a rarity that does so. But for the most part, abortion clinics do not give adoption services. They do not provide a formula in a time where such things are in critical short supply and mothers are in desperate need. They do not provide diapers. They do not provide clothing. They do not provide parenting classes. These are all things which you can find at many crisis pregnancy centers. These are not choices. In fact, uh, there was another elected representative who tried to push through legislation that would provide $10 million to abortion clinics and not a penny to crisis pregnancy centers. These are not choices. These are people who are pushing abortion. These are people who are pushing death. So I do not concede that while I am for life, the other side is for choices. I don't agree with that. I think that they are for death. And in fact, it perhaps descends into snarkiness, but in the last few months that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, many of these places that have claimed to be for choices have shut down even though only 3% of their business was supposedly from abortion. Now, God forbid we lose 3% of our funding. I would hate that. We want to grow and prosper. But if we lost 3% of our funding, you would not know a lick of difference in anything that happened, and we certainly would not shut our doors. I just I can't believe that that is truly what's going on. Choices are about having options before you and having worked with a great many very heroic women and no few men who have stood on the front lines of not only abortion clinics who are trying to get women to not make that choice, but also with crisis pregnancy counselors who deal one-on-one -on -one with women who are in crisis pregnancies, I know the choices that they offer the women who are in crisis and are terrified. And those choices are extremely challenging. But we have to have choices. And in fact, all of the scriptures that we hear today are all about choice. All of them. And in fact, even our worship was about choice. Even the, the music that we sang today 
you reign above it all and over everyone. I'm going to mangle the words because I'm not going to remember it exactly. It was the, you know, I only heard it when you heard it. But uh, over every praise, you reign above it all. Well, here's the, here's the, the, the fact, okay? For our praise to be authentic, for our praise to be sincere, we have to have the option to give it. We have to have free will. We have to be able to say, I will give you praise or not. We have the choice to honor God or thumb our nose at him. And for our, cho- or our praise to be sincere, we have to be able to give it freely. It's the same thing as when your kid messes up and does something wrong to his brother or sister or one of your, your spouse or whatever, and you're like, say you're sorry. And they're like, sorry. Okay. Real sincere. But when your kid actually, <laughs> my kid's like, what? <laughs> when your child is actually really contrite, that is an honest repentance. Same thing goes with praise. If you're just, you know, putting their arm behind their back and going, sing the song. It's not true praise. You have to have the choice to give praise. Of course, with our Old Testament reading, it was crystal clear. Through Moses, God says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today, love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your hearts turn away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the lands in which you cross over to the Jordan, go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. And that you may love the Lord your God, and you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days. And you may dwell in land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and give them. Now rest assured, my position on the sanctity of life does not come from two words in the middle of Deuteronomy. It is a much longer and deeper theological position. But... Herein, God says, choose life, that you may have life, and your children may have life, and have it abundantly. Make the good decision, follow the Lord. He doesn't say, I'm going to make you. He doesn't say, you have to. He says, look, do good, or bad things are going to happen. Look, there are consequences to your bad decisions. Parents know this when dealing with their children, like, you know, do the good thing or things will happen. Do your homework throughout the week or when you get to the night before, you're going to be miserable. These are just facts of life. Of course, my favorite passage about choice comes from the letter to Philemon. You kind of have to read between the lines here. You kind of have to know the backstory. You kind of have to know that Paul is a bit of a jerk. I know it's a little challenging to say that about St. Paul, but he is. Because essentially, we're dealing with the circumstances of a runaway slave who, by rights, could be put to death. And this runaway slave is named Onesimus, and Onesimus has run away and come to Paul. And Paul has done the right thing, and Paul has sent him back to someone whom Paul had a role in converting, Philemon. And Paul essentially says, look, I could compel you to send him back to me. 
I, Paul, the aged and infirmed, who am now in chains for the gospel. But I don't want to do that, because that would deprive you of the blessing of sending him here of your own free will to be of service to me, who is in chains for the gospel and old, and who led you to the Lord and all that means. So I don't want to make you do this, although I could, because I'm your father in Christ. But literally, Paul is like turning the emotional thumb screws on this man. But even so, he gives him a choice. He doesn't say, send Onesimus back to me. He says, I would like you to send him back to me. Now, he's really putting the thumb screws on him. But again, he gives him a choice. Maybe a little manipulative, but it's still a choice. And that brings us to this wonderful passage here in St. Luke's Gospel. Hate your mom and dad. Hate your brother and sister. Some siblings are like, yeah, no problem, easy. <laughs> I got that one down. That's one of the easiest things Jesus has said. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his mother and father and his wife and his children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. On today's episode of Things Jesus Doesn't Actually Mean Like You Think It Means. Okay, so, Jesus is the Word made flesh, the Word of God. Jesus, the Word of God, will not contradict the Word of God. Right? Right? Scripture does not contradict Scripture. So the Word of God which says, honor your father and mother, will not say, hate your father and mother. Right? Right? And in fact, Jesus who said, I have not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it, and not one jot or tittle, not one cross of a T or dot of an I, will fade away until all of this law is fulfilled, is not going to tell you to hate your mother and your father at the same time where the Ten Commandments says, oh, honor your father and mother, right? So what does he mean? He means you can't have anything above following the Lord. Okay? And all of this is about leaving everything behind, forsaking everything, and following the Lord. Now, that's the real challenge. Now, are you, are you supposed to hate these things? Are you supposed to hate your wife? No, you're supposed to love your wife. And in fact, Scripture talks about loving your wife as Christ loves the church. But if that wife keeps you from following the Lord, you have to follow the Lord. If your parents are obstructing you from following the Lord, you have to follow the Lord. Whoever does not bear his cross and, and follow me cannot be my disciple. And he talks about building a tower and making sure you have enough to finish it. Make sure that you have it. Make sure you count the cost. Realize what this is going to be. He talks about the armies and coming out and making sure that you have enough men to fight the battle. Right? In another place in Luke's gospel, Jesus says, if anyone desires to follow me, to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, we have to remember, nowadays crosses are a wonderful sign of a religion, right? They're a sign that we're a follower of Jesus. They're a sign that we love the Lord, right? Somebody has a cross around their neck. They're a sign that you know, we're a Christian, or we have particular taste in jewelry, whatever. 
at Jesus' time, when he's talking about this, when he says, pick up your cross and follow me, this is before the crucifixion. This is very strange language. Essentially what he's saying is, take up your electric chair and follow me. The cross was an implement of execution. It is a means of death. He's saying, take up that which will kill you and follow me because we are called to die to self. This week we celebrated the, the feast of the beheading of John the Baptist. Yes, we celebrate his death because in his death he is fully and completely born to eternal life. And I believe one of the most powerful things that John the Baptist said was, I must decrease that he may increase. And that not only goes for St. John the Baptist and his followers, my followers must decrease that his may increase. My reputation and my status and my following must decrease so his can grow. Myself must decrease that he can increase in me. I want to go back to the abortion clinics. Because Jesus spoke about this in the Last Supper. In John chapter 16, verse 20, he said, Most assuredly I say to you, that some of you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. And you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice. For your joy no one will take away from you. And this applies to all of us. As we pick up our crosses and follow him, we have sorrow. We face that pain and anguish. Taking up our cross and following him, dying to ourself, is no easy task. It is death. It is death to self. But if we die with him, we know that we shall also rise with him. Glory to God. And just like that woman in labor, while we have that wailing and that anguish, we have that joy which follows, for a new life is born. Praise God. And there's one thing that I can't neglect to say. While we're given choices, we have to remember that those people who are at the clinics, they are not our enemies. The doctors, the nurses, the technicians, all those people who are in there, the secretaries, the women who go in, the men who take them, they are not our enemies. We wage not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers at work in this present darkness. Those people who work there, those women who are deceived, those people who receive the abortions, they are as much victims of the enemy as anyone else. And Jesus loves them and died for them as much as anyone else. And when it comes to choice, they're given the choice to repent and receive the love of God just as much as we are. In fact, those who have, have become tremendous advocates. Those who have been doctors and nurses and have run abortion clinics and have repented, and become pro-life advocates, have become pillars of the pro-life movement. 
because choice to choose life, choice to pick up your cross and follow him, extends even to those who are in the darkest places. David says in the Psalms, if I make my bed in the depths of the darkness, even you are there. Because darkness and light are the same to you. We're called to pick up our cross and follow him. Wherever we are, he's there waiting for us. When we stumble, he's there waiting to help us up. He's waiting to encourage us, to strengthen us. He's given us community of believers to uphold us. He's given us his own body and blood to strengthen us for the journey. He's given us his Holy Spirit to empower us and remind us. And he calls us to make the choice to follow him, to pick up our cross, to choose life, knowing that there's blessing in it, knowing that it's painful, knowing that there's anguish in it, but knowing that though there's pain in the night, there's joy in the morning. May God give us each the grace to take up that cross and follow him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, this is Father Scott Loco with Church Messiah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please click the like button below. And also, you can click the subscribe button to get notifications in your inbox when we post other videos in the future. You can click the little bell below and you'll get uh, notifications also. So do that and uh, we'd appreciate it. So thanks. God bless you. We appreciate it. Uh, pray for us and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.